are these people? This story, I, I mean, I'm assuming everyone in the chat is family. This story is basically preaching to the choir. Uh, but this might be for the new people who might be watching us. So if you're new, welcome. Hi. So happy you're here. Um, but this might be a clip, once we do clip this out, that you may want to share with your friends and family, especially if they're liberal. Uh, because this article t is going to talk about a lot of the issues that we kind of say here and in independent media in terms of you know, corporations are basically fleecing us of our wealth and well-being and our mental health, among other things. And it's time to revolt. Among mm -hmm. them, meaning the working class um, has to revolt. So, um, so this might be another one that we'll probably have to save in the archives yep. for another time. Um, this is from, who wrote this? Uh, Leo Leopold. That's Leopold That's in it. Consortium News and Common Dreams, where he writes, pillaging by the super rich, American workers are getting fleeced and they know it. So yep. let's see what he says. There comes a time in the history of a nation where extremely extreme inequality turns to, into pillage. If economic power is concentrated, so is political power. And the wealthy are able to do whatever they damn well please. They can lie, cheat, and steal because they know they won't be held to account. Have the super rich now taken control of America's political and economic systems? Some current news makes me worry. Let's start with the food industry, the food cartel that includes General Mills, PepsiCo, and Tyson, which has been jacking up prices nonstop since 2020. Why are food prices up 25% since then? These giants blame supply change, the rising cost of labor, and the rising prices of other inputs required to produce and distribute their products. It's not their fault, they say. But the real cop culprit upon closer examination is stock buybacks, another word for stock manipulation. These firms are fleecing shoppers by raising prices and then using the cash to buy back their own stocks, thereby increasing the market value of each share. Stock buybacks do not increase the value of a company, but they move money effortlessly to the largest Wall Street share owners and to a company's top executives who receive most of their compensation by a stock incentive. As food prices shot up by 25%, the 10 largest grocery and restaurant brands have together returned or pledged to return more than $77 billion to shareholders, reports Veronica Richobin in her excellent article, Big Food, Big Profits, Big Lies. In related news, California fast food giants have claimed that the state's 2023 minimum wage law, which raises, raises raised wages from $16 to $20 per hour, killed 10,000 jobs. Closer look, picked up by the Los Angeles Times, showed that the industry cooked the numbers by comparing employment in September with December. Mm. But every year, September is within the peak dine-out season, and in December, people dine out least. When adjusted for seasonal variation or compared with the employment levels exactly one year earlier, both standard ways of measuring employment levels, the number of jobs actually Increased by 7,000 after the minimum wage law was enacted. Don't oh. lie on the public platform. So it sounds like you pay people more, you know, they're willing to work for you, Reef. Crazy, crazy how that works. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> the numbers don't lie and they spell disaster for you. Bowen recently crashed into the New York Times. <laughs> 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 Bowen recently crashed into the news again when company CEO Dave Cal Calhoun was roasted by a couple of congressional committees about its shoddy production processes. There were plenty of outraged performances, but none of the oh-so self-righteous lawmakers had the cojones to ask about the impact on safety of Bowen's $61 billion in stock buybacks, or how about how Calhoun hauled in 30 million in stock incentives 
while Boeing lost $1.6 billion in 2023. Mm. Is it possible that maybe, just maybe, Boeing financed those buybacks by laying off workers, moving work to lower-wage subcontractors, and cutting safety corners? Radio silence from Congress. See, did stop buybacks knock the bolts out of Boeing? Uh huh. I mean, also, I think they are facing a fraud lawsuit where they have to show up in court. Like, so I I got to do more research on that, but supposedly could be worth a could be worth a segment. Yep. At some point. So. Um. Uh, then there's the way Wall Street squeezes out new home buyers by gobbling up houses and turning them into rentals. See, Wall Street to working class home buyers. Forget about it. Forget about Let's not it. forget that John Deere recently announced moving jobs from the US to Mexico while feasting on government contracts and, of course, using job cuts to finance stock buybacks. Also, John fucking Deere, despicable company, by the way, but specifically. <laughs> Their right to repair lawsuits spent millions and millions of dollars to try to fight. Why? Because people were getting Russian software so that their tractors could run because they were tired of paying the exorbitant repair costs John Deere forces farmers who have nothing and are not making profit right now to do. So, you know, literally locking people out of their tractors that they have spent hard-earned money on. But... It's not the problem with just Don, John Deere, uh, but it is one of the many right to repair fights that we need to have in future. So, but yes, continue, please. Um, Do we even have to mention how Big Farmer is charging us more than it does Canadians, or how health insurance companies collude to fix prices, or how giant hospital chains overcharge us with impunity? They rip us off to feed their profits, which then get shipped to the riches of the rich via stock buybacks. Of the three trillion in after-tax U.S. corporate profits in 2022, about 1.31 trillion went to stock buybacks. In 1980, there were 13 U.S. billionaires. Now there are 748. None of this is accidental. Stock buybacks were deregulated in 1982. That's when Wall Street began its financial war on workers and got filthy rich. See my new book for the gory details. Um, corporate welfare. Look at that um, crazy, ridiculous amount of money glass-walled building that a couple <laughs> of rocks could easily fuck up. But, you know, stone glass houses and all that. You can um, zoom out, please. Yeah. I had to read the title, the subheading, because... Just hearing the phrase corporate welfare makes me nauseous because it's a stark reminder of how feeble we are. Progressives have been complaining about government giveaways to large corporations at least since the 1970s, and the practice has only grown worse. I bet you already know how bad it is. We taxpayers give the oil industry, oil industry about $20 billion a year in subsidies while BP, Shell, Chevron, ExxonMobil, and Total Energies plow $104 billion in dividends and stock buybacks into the poorest, into the pockets of their shareholders. 2022. You greedy Wall, Street Wall Street may be getting as much as $800 million a day by the Federal Reserve, according uh -huh. to the report. I have yeah. yet to find a credible source that adds it all up. I'm guessing it's well over a trillion dollars a year in direct subsidies, tax breaks, and financial market supports. To rub it in, the richest corporations have successfully lobbied for so many tax loopholes that they can that they pay little or nothing at all. But wait, they tell us, tax cuts and subsidies create jobs. But they do. That's the biggest. That's the biggest and most painful lie of all. Since the de deregulation of Wall Street, corporations have been on a job killing spree. Stock buybacks are financed with job cuts. More than 30 million of us had suffered through mass layoffs, defined as 50 or more workers let go at one time since 1996. Kill the jobs, save some money, buy back your stocks, put the money in your pocket, rinse and repeat. Yep. Working class revolts? We're nowhere near any kind of organized mass outright. 
Ain't that the truth? Yep. But American workers are not stupid. They may not be able to spell out in detail how they're getting ripped off, but they know it's happening. Most importantly, they understand that the government works for the rich and not for them. That's why so many are willing to support train wrecking outsiders who attack the government, even when they are anti worker billionaire buffoons. Sounds like Trump. Like, uh, so, yeah. You know, you're feeling it, actually. <laughs> Insert it politician her. here. Right. You know. Um, in 1964, 77% of Americans had trust in the federal government. Now it's 16%. We're living with the results of the collapse of counter-waving, countervailing working class power. In 1955, 45% of the private sector workers were in labor unions. Today is only six. Mm. That means there's no organized mass of working class folks with enough power stop corporate looting and that's on and i know you and india have talked about this ad nauseum and how do we miss that that's on purpose for this reason yep. so no unions no like just practically no way that they can demand their rights essentially mm -hmm. um and no way and more importantly for the unions that do exist it's a way for corporations to kind of come in and kind of be the heavy hand that controls the leadership yep. uh, to you do see, what it wants. You see, boys and uh, girls, unions are reformist in nature. Um, <laughs> hate to tell you, not that they're, they are available in other systems of commerce, but they are much better in those systems because all the rest is already taken care of. Then, you know, it's actually fighting for the reform you need as opposed to, like, uh, just crumbs. So, whatever. Um, you know, co-ops also, very good. Please go look at co-ops. Um, you know. Um, so. I hate to be alarmist, but we're really in bad shape, and it's likely to get worse. I don't. How wee so woo, wee woo, wee woo. Yo, sound the alarm. Power is so tilted towards the rich that more and more people are giving up on politics, leaving the field open to the modern day robber baron. This corrupt government is a petri dish for conspiracy theories and hate. Somehow, somewhere, a new working class movement has to emerge. I've been begging progressive labor leaders to start a new organization that will fight against mass layoffs and for workers who are not in unions. How about workers united for justice? Uh huh. Also, Kashama's uh, thing still around, I think, right? Yes. Um, while labor unions must organize shop by shop, they should also acknowledge that labor law is so tilted against workers that it will be very difficult to make major inroads into the 94% with no union protection. We need a new parallel path to connect with these workers that doesn't involve years and years of costly combat within a rigged labor law system. <laughs> I mean, I mean <laughs> I'm with them. <laughs> you know. I feel so, Indy should be reading this. No, I'm yeah, kidding, I mean, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what that parallel path is, guillotine. Possibly big inflatable ones, <laughs> large bricks through windows. I Who don't are know. these people? Hey, look at that! Oh. The Ford Lord with twenty bucks. Look at you being amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh. Thank you. A minute to get to that um, one. Yeah, victims of mass layoffs are, are everywhere. They need a voice. They need an organization that will fight for them. If leaders like Sean Fain of United Auto Workers and Sarah Nelson from the Association of Flight Attendants, CWA, AFA, reached out to non-union workers who are getting crushed by Wall Street stock buybacks, those workers might just come running. But what are they doing instead, Colin? What are they doing instead? They're hanging out with Biden. They're yeah. fundraising. They're taking trips to places like Cuba. They're doing uh, lots of fun <laughs> things. 
union leaders doing great stuff, not look behind the curtain. We covered a lot of this on how do we miss that. So, you know, please go check out all of our uh, videos there. Just one bite after the binge watch them all. There's hundreds. Go ahead. What, what are you doing for the next? You know? So, <laughs> but anyway. Um, until we rebuild large scale working class power, it's going to be a very rough ride. If we mm-hmm. have learned anything at all since 1980, is that greed begets greed. The super rich always want more and they're not shy about grabbing it, even if democracy crumbles all around them and us. Yep. So, I mean, it doesn't necessarily give solutions, but I think it's kind of good to hear some truth. It offered, wants it mostly it offered you to think about well. solutions, you know? Right. So, like, Which not on the onus of the writer. Thing. Right. That's our job is to figure mm-hmm. that out, and I think in independent media, I don't even that think it's ours. Our job to you know, align but with you guys to figure this out. When we um, find it, we'll tell you. So <laughs> I'm still waiting. Um, yeah, but, I mean, I agree. So a lot of work still to be done, but you know, well, get on that shit. Well. I, I would argue that work needs to start. Not yeah. Because you're saying this in terms of like you in the belief that the work has been happening. The work has not been happening because no. people are just so distraught and just so banged down that no one's doing anything. And the people that we're looking to as heroes are now running off on that corporate side for their own uh, selfish reasons and they forget the little guys that help them elevate. You know, we talk, I, I yeah. mean, we talk about Smalls all the time, you know, and he has said it's a position that he didn't want. Totally got that. But at the same time, your priority it w- w- was to the folks at JFK. What have they done within the last three years? Jeez. No, jeez. What are you doing, Freeze? What are you doing? Freeze? <laughs> no, Freeze? <laughs> what are you doing, Chris? No. No, <laughs> Freeze? I didn't think you would put down the soundboard among them. Oh, so definitely when you have putting that up. For, for, <laughs> for that Chris. That's the Chris I'm using it for. Um, Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. Please, parallel structures would be nice. Don't fight in the system that is rigged against you and that is willing to give you the illusion of hope so that you sit back down. So, you know, hate to tell you, but a lot of work to be done. Yeah. Ugh. I think we probably need to cut that part out <laughs> as a short and just post it. Like yep. parallel systems, parallel systems, parallel systems do not engage in the electoral system. Do not engage with the electoral system. Like yep. work outside of it in order to get the things you want. So agreed. But yeah, but as we said, we need you guys to you guys are the ones that have to make it happen. Um I definitely a um, lesson independent media. One of ideally should be working alongside you all to make that happen. So let us know in the comments what you think those parallel systems should look like. Um, uh, talking about stuff like that is one of the reasons, probably among others, is why we're demonetized and suppressed on YouTube. So if you want to support our work, please, you can scan the QR code that you see on your screen. You can either go to the link that you see at the bottom of your screen or there's a plethora of links in the description where you can donate to INN. Um, Money, please, don't please. To like, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, it helps us with the algorithm. Making a comment also helps, you know, allegedly elevates our content. Um, and please help us get to free just more <laughs> just more subs please uh anything just to make us more viable and to before 
they take us down, which I'm pretty sure will be not too long coming, honestly, uh, with the thing way things are going. Um, and thanks for watching us, y'all. We love you. Yeah.